push that rock with Simpson math. So to understand this lesson, we have to understand this mathematical object called a factorial with um, the common definition for is just for whole numbers. And for zero, it's very special. Zero is just defined to be one separately from the normal definition. So the normal definition is you multiply the whole number by every whole number before it all the way down to one and then you stop. And that's why zero is special because zero doesn't have any numbers uh, below it going to one. So anyway, we go five times four times three times two times one. <clears throat> now you notice there's three factorial, which is six. Then there's four factorial, which is four times six, which is 24. And then five factorial is five times four factorial. So that would be 120. So when you multiply this out, you get 120. So five factorial is 120. One more example. <clears throat> what if I wanted seven factorial? Well, that would be seven times six times all of that five factorial. So I would just go six times the 120 and then seven times that result to get seven factorial. I won't finish that, I'll let you do it. Okay, I think you can understand factorials now. And remember zero factorial has a special definition, one. Now what we wanna do in this video <clears throat> is find this very special number in mathematics. It's this very special number and it is the reciprocal of this alternating series. Remember when we did alternating series? Yeah, it harkens back to when we had this negative one to a power and it changed sign. And we have this factorial in the denominator, which is why I mentioned the factorials. So let's go after this a series. Now notice it's infinite, so we're not gonna actually be able to add them all up. <laughs> that would take a very long time, a little math joke there. But what we can do is use our trick for just estimating it. Uh, sometimes when these values that you're adding and subtracting get tiny, it's you only have to add a few terms to get a fairly good estimate of an infinite long series. We did some of that earlier in the semester. So let's try that. Now, the first thing to do is get the terms, which is the sequence described by this um, function right here. And remember, k starting at 0. So I'm going to do that. Oh, so let's estimate. Okay, well, here we go. I'm going to do that. So remember, k starts at 0, then 1, then 2, then 3, then 4, then 5, and so on forever. And there's the little formula up there. Hopefully you can see it in the video. So I put 0 in for this k and this k, and I have negative 1 to the 0 over 0 factorial. Then I put 1 in for this k and this k, and I have negative 1 to the 1 over 1 factorial, and so forth and so on. Now, negative 1 to the 0 is 1, and 0 factorial is 1, so that's a big fat 1. Negative 1 to the 1 is a negative 1, and 1 factorial is 1, so I get negative 1. Negative 1 squared is 1 over 2 factorial, which is 2 times 1, which is 2, so I get a half. And now we notice the pattern, pause, neg, pause. So this is going to be neg. And 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1. So we get negative 1, 6. Then this is going to be positive. And 4 factorial is 4 times 3 factorial because it's 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. But 4 times 6 is 24. And then I have negative 1 to the fifth, that's going to be negative, and then 5 factorial we did on the other page, that's going to be 120. <clears throat> now remember, what we're trying to do with these terms of the sequence that go on and on and on forever is add them up. So we're going to do that next. We're going to add them up next. So <clears throat> we're going to take the 1 plus the negative 1 plus the half plus the negative 1 sixth, plus the 1 over 24, plus the 1 over, <clears throat> wait, there should have been a negative, oh yeah, I left off the negative right there, sorry, that was a negative, and then a negative, hopefully you caught that when you were writing your notes, if you were writing notes, and then so forth and so on, and it goes on for infinity, but I'm going to use this as our estimate, it turns out it's not that bad an estimate, <clears throat> um, so because, notice how small this fraction is already, and factorials grow very quickly, so the next factorial, remember, is going to be 6 times this 120. So it's going to be 1 over 6 times 120. That's really tiny. And then it's going to be negative 1 over 7 times that already big number. So it's going to be even bigger, so even tinier fraction. So this is going to be an okay estimate. Let's go ahead and add it up. Well, those two go to 0. 
and now I need a common denominator of 120. And this one already has the common denominator. Now 24 goes in 125 times, so I multiply the top and the bottom by 5, <clears throat> and I get that. And then 6 goes into 120, well it goes into 12 twice, so it must go 20 times, so this gives me a negative 20. And then 2 goes in 120 60 times, so this is 60, and we're adding all this up, so I have 60 minus 20. Well that's going to give me a, a 40. Meanwhile over here 5 and negative 1 is 4. So I get 44 over 120. Obviously uh, 4 will go into 44. So I can uh, divide by 4 and get 11. But if I divide this by 4, I must divide that by 4. But 4 goes into 12 three times, clearly. So we get 11 thirtieths. So notice if this was 10 thirtieths, it'd be a third. <laughs> you notice it's pretty close to one third. So uh, it's actually going to be <clears throat> um, a little bit smaller than that. Let's see, one third, let's see, 10. So it's actually going to be a little bigger than that, right? Let's see, because 10 over 30 would be smaller than 11 over 30. So it's a little bigger than a third. But we don't really need this number. Well, we do for our estimate. So we'll, well, let's just use 11 thirtieths as our estimate. And if we need a decimal, you know, we may be 0 0.36, something like that. But I don't think we need the decimal. Let's just go with 11 thirtieths. <clears throat> okay, now, but what we were trying to get, now that we've estimated, we've estimated this, remember what we were actually trying to get was that special number that was the reciprocal of this. So the reciprocal, since that is 11 thirtieths, Remember, the reciprocal of this is special. Well, so <clears throat> let's get the reciprocal. So 11 thirtieths to the negative 1. This negative 1 in this context with the number implies reciprocal. So it is 30 over 11. Well, 11 goes under 33 three times. So it's close to 3. It's 2 and 8 elevenths, which, you know, is going to be close to... Um, not exactly, of course, but close to 2.72. And this is a fairly good estimate of the actual number we're looking for. In fact, it rounds, if you round to the nearest thousandths place, to 2.718. How about that? So 1 over that series, that infinite series, starting at 0, that's negative 1 to the k over k, uh, factorial. This fraction here is approximately 2.718 and we have a special name for it. We give it a very special name because it's a very special number and that name is E. Why E? Well, the man that discovered this number and how important it is, his name starts with E. So, he's a Swiss mathematician. Read about him. He's interesting. You pronounce it Euler because he's Swiss. Math made simple.